Welcome to the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. It looks kind of sparse out there. I'm sure, I'm sure the blizzard uh, detoured a lot of people. But we're going to do this anyway. And we're so glad that you're here. And thank you for those tuning in today. I'm a little bit jealous. I'd like to be in my Christmas pajamas and eating a Pop-Tart or something and watching the live stream today. But <laughs> that's not going to happen. But I'm sure we'll have more fun than you will. So there. <laughs> Welcome. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas holiday. And um, we're going to start off our service today by singing together. Uh, come darkness. Come light. Wonderful Mary Chapin Carpenter song. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Thunderous applause. Good morning, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Rob Ekman, and I'm your service host today. And we are so thrilled that you have joined us today, whether you're live with us here in, the, in our sanctuary or at home via our uh, virtual love stream. Thank you for joining us and braving the weather outside today. I hope you all had a wonderful uh, solstice and Christmas. We had a fantastic Friday night candle lighting service. Um, and for those of you who participated and, and joined us, thank you so much. And we hope that that, uh, that message lives in you and uh, resonates as it should. Our center is a spiritual community that teaches a philosophy for daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among all religions. We honor all pathways by which people seek to know and connect with the divine, and we work on our individual consciousness to make the world a better place. Our practitioner holding high watch today is Teresa Martin. Throughout the service, Teresa will be in prayer for us and with us, knowing the best and highest good is unfolding as we share this time together. And our prayer practitioner this morning is Farrell Zeman. I'd like to take a moment and welcome anyone who is here with us for the very first time. Um, if you don't mind raising your hand, yes. Christina, who I had the chance to meet this morning, thank you for joining us. Is there anyone yay. else? And over here, yay, thank you for being here. I hope that something that you hear today uh, resonates with you and makes a difference in your lives. 
Wherever you're joining us from, I'd like you to, I would like to invite you to recommit yourself to our spiritual purpose by joining me in saying our purpose statement aloud. We are a thriving community where individually and together we embody and express our spiritual magnificence for the highest good of all. Thank you. For the latest information about what's happening here at our center, you can visit our website, which is online at www.spirituallyfree.org. Today, our guest speaker is, oh, it's me. And our guest musician, our guest music today is Rick Charette and Amanda Kay, who is a longtime friend um, and supporter of our center. So we're very excited to hear from them together. Beautiful duet music. <clears throat> Announcements. Um, it is my sad duty to inform you that our, a dear friend of our center, Lorraine Horsemanshoff, made her transition on December 22nd, one day after the winter solstice. Lorraine participated in many services and ceremonies here as special, our special musical guest and was really widely known for her musical, magical power. Rick Charette wrote a beautiful tribute to Lorraine, which is featured this week in our online newsletter, and I'd like to share a short bit of it with you. Lorraine was attuned to our natural world and celebrated the resonant connections in all people and all life. She was driven to create music and to share it. Anything that could be picked, plucked, strum, strummed, blown into, tapped or struck, she perceived as accompaniment to a song that must be played. It was, if she, it was as if she heard what all of these instruments wanted to say. Lorraine exuded kindness, gentleness, love and care for all earthly things and all people. She lived her life sharing these values in her authentic, soft, yet very powerful way. She will be dearly missed but never forgotten. Her bright light and glorious music continue. And I think news about a uh, celebration of life for Lorraine is um, upcoming on, um, and you'll find more information about that when it's time on our uh, Facebook page and website. Uh, we'd like to invite you to a New Year's Eve world healing meditation. Uh, this is a tradition that's been going on since 1986, where people around the world gather to create a collective meditation for healing the world. Now this year, as, like, as last year, this will be on Facebook at um, the Centers for Spiritual Living Facebook page, not our center here in Salt Lake's page, but it, on Facebook it is literally Centers for Spiritual Living, um, and there, there's a link available on our uh, website and on Facebook. <clears throat> this takes place at, at, at Greenwich Mean Time, and easily translated, that means that local time is 5 a.m. So that uh, since it's virtual, that means you don't have to get up and get dressed necessarily, uh, but uh, please plan on uh, logging on to Facebook 15 minutes in advance to be, to be ready and at 5 a.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time, uh, the meditation will begin. Later that same night on New Year's Eve at six o'clock here in our sanctuary in person, Please join our practitioner team and our music team at 6 p.m. for our annual ceremonial burning bowl service. This ceremony is a sacred time each year when we, when we release all that we don't want to take with us into the new year by writing these things down and releasing them from our lives as we symbolically release them to the fire, literally. Uh, for many of us, this is the most meaningful service of the year. We're excited to do it again in person, and please, if you could join us, that will be uh, this Friday at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We're excited that Youth Church will be, getting, will be beginning again soon. Hildreth Ferris is our new Youth Church leader and is looking for volunteers who would like to help out as teachers and assistants. So please contact Hildreth if you'd like to spend one Sunday a month with our youngest Science of Mind students age five to 12. 
All right, that's my announcements for this morning. So I want to remind us all that this center is founded on and grounded in prayer. This helps us deal with whatever comes our way and helps to create a positive experience regardless of our situations. Our professional prayer practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer and are ready to pray for you and with you. Online, you can click the link on our homepage to send them a request. Here in, the, here in, in um, Three Dimensional Real Life, you can visit with one of them after the service and also in the uh, lobby is a prayer box and you can write your prayer there, put it in the box and rest assured and comfortable that knowing that our practitioners will be praying for you all week long. Now, I invite you to settle in and allow Farrell's reading and the centering music to take us to the sacred space within, and then Farrell will lead us in prayer. My reading today is uh, titled The Light of a New Dawn, written by Debbie Ford. To live in the light of a new day and an unimaginable and unpredictable future, you must become fully present to a deeper truth, not a truth from your head, but a truth from your heart, not, not a truth from, uh, from your ego, but a truth from a higher source. You have to be willing to be deeply honest with yourself about the shape your life is in each day. We and we alone have the power to change our lives and we can choose to do so at any moment. Do not wait another day to become fully engaged in your life, to learn to love and to forgive and to live with a greater purpose and meaning. Standing in, your, in our power demands that we be vulnerable, listen to our own voice, and take risks outside of the comfort of what we know. The greatest act of courage is to be and to own all of who you are without apology, without excuses, without masks to cover the truth of who you are. Live in the knowledge that you are a gift to the world. Remember, all the answers you need are inside of you you only have to become quiet enough to hear them.
sacred space connected to the maker of heaven we are filled with gratitude for this day for this opportunity to gather together and celebrate our belief in that oneness of which we are I am filled with gratitude for each and every person that is tuned in and is here today being part of this celebration. I'm filled with gratitude for the weather outside that is bringing us much needed water for the coming season. I'm grateful for this life that flows through each one of us. And I'm grateful for this very moment. I give thanks to that divine intelligence that is in all things, as together we say, and so it is. Thank you, Pharaoh. In our journey of becoming, we can always look to the goodness in our lives. We can always look outside of ourselves and see the good. Most of the time, that seems to be a choice. But we can also look inward at our goodness. We can give in to the divine within us, that which calls us to be greater than we think we are. So let's align our thoughts with, with our highest good, with our highest self, and sing together this song. It's called Let Love Have Me.
Thanks so much for singing along. It is my pleasure to introduce special music today. Um, the better half of this duo is, um, is my daughter. My daughter Amanda um, has traveled in so many different lands, not only in this country, but overseas. She's been all over the place. And I've encouraged that, though it's been really hard. A small family, um, beautiful family. Um, my two grandsons and, and uh, her loving husband, David. Very successful, so he must go where he is called because he has so many gifts to share. My daughter has shared her gifts um, in the arts and her love of birds. And her love of music has just recently begun to shine a little bit more. And this is a premiere. This is the first time, I can't believe it, I'm embarrassed to say, this is the first time that my daughter Amanda and I have performed together. So we're going to share a couple of songs. Um, uh, the first one is a Hanukkah song. But it's got a, a beautiful message for this season. So please welcome to the stage my daughter, Amanda Kay. It's called Light the Candles of Freedom. Mm -hmm. Candlelight flickering, children sit listening, Papa's voice whispering, telling the story of Hanukkah in the days when miracles came true. Those were the days back then, can they come true again? Light the candles of freedom. Share it from the heart. Let the flame last forever. Heal the warmth of its glow. Light the candles of freedom. Hanukkah, as they did so long. Special friends, memories, everyone listen please. Come hear the story of Hanukkah. Even now miracles come true. Every child, woman, man come join together.
So how am I supposed to introduce a speaker after that? Wow. Dear Rob Ekman, he joined our community back in 1997, which was just about the time I did. I knew him to be such a gregarious social animal, and I say that in the kindest way. He used to host parties at his home, at his home and it was marvelous food and laughter and so much fun time. He's been just a warm light in our community. After graduating from Utah State University in horticulture and garden design, um, his creative spirit finally led him to be the marketing director at the King's English Bookstore in Salt Lake City. What a perfect job for Rob Ekman. His warm basso voice and it just so perfectly matches his, his spirit, his personality. Uh, I love to hear him speak. He always speaks from the heart. I'm so glad he is a member of our community and showing up in the brightest way. Please welcome Rob Ekman. Hello, everybody. Hello again. <clears throat> when Rick said bosso voice, Farrell leaned over and he said, he, doesn't, he didn't mean bossy. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Hello again, and, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, when I was asked to speak today, it was partly, uh, it was framed with the idea that it's the last Sunday of our year, and that uh, the... The committee who chooses speakers wanted uh, an elder of our center to speak. And I looked around and said, well, who are you talking to? Uh, um, um, I am 55 years old and I'm a grandpa, but I don't know if that makes me an elder or not. But to be able to be here and speak today and to speak on, on, manifest, on manifesting and spiritual equivalence is my great honor. Um, my talk today is entitled, The Light of a New Dawn. And as the year 2021 winds to a close, and we have the opportunity to look forward to a new year, 2022, naturally uh, and culturally, so much inclination leans into looking at ways to grow or to change and to evolve ourselves and our lives. Uh, we know them commonly as New Year's resolutions, and we've all been there, right? We've made resolutions and we've, uh, we've abandoned resolutions, but all of them have some things in common, and, and, uh, and resolutions and change are something that's very elemental to our philosophy uh, because we believe in manifesting the life that we want, and this is exactly what this is about. So the question today is, what do you want to create? Uh, what do I want to create? And um, it's our natural human instinct and inclination to ask how and when and where, when those aren't our concerns. Our concerns are to be as clear as we can on the dreams that we have and, and, and knowing that they will come to fruition. Now, um, I have committed to gaining my practitioner license. And this is going to take time. Uh, thank you, thank you. Part of the reason I say it is for the sake of saying it, because the more I say it, the more I believe it, and the more I say it, if I drop out, you guys will say what's going on. Um, but uh, in, 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 um, in the process of becoming a licensed practitioner for Centers of Spiritual Living, there's classwork. And this classwork uh, recently, naturally, is online. And so for the last six weeks or so, I've been going through a class on mental equivalence. And this is a required course um, in the steps toward uh, practition, practitioner training. Mental equivalence, this class, is, uh, has really uh, in, 
has really taken me to a place that I think is, is one of my favorites in this philosophy. We have a lot of tools in our philosophy, a lot of spiritual tools. Um, we have spiritual mind treatment, which is our prayer, our process of prayer. We have meditation, that opportunity we have to, to sit quietly in silence and in spirit, to reflect and to listen carefully for, for those um, insights to carry us forward. We have sacred study, and sacred study, of course, is reading and learning more that is about what has been written and, and said about uh, growth and about spirituality. We have intentional manifestation. Now, I've been doing this for a long time, and I was interested to see in our coursework that intentional manifestation is a spiritual tool. And you know what that is? That is really simply that daily activity of, of grasping what it is that you wanted to manifest and then um, embracing it and, and, and rejoicing in it. Um, it can be anything large or anything small, but we all do this every day, don't we? There's things that we, that we uh, ask for that, that come forth, and then grasping them and making them our own is intentional manifestation. Another tool we have is visioning. It's a unique tool that Centers for Spiritual Living brings to the world of spirituality. This, in a nutshell, which could be a whole nother talk, but in a nutshell, is a process, a set process of gathering and clarifying what it is we want based on different topics, based on a specific topic. It's an amazing process. Other tools we have are mental tools, and those include gratitude, Gratitude, being grateful for something and being able to express that brings us so much closer to spirit. Compassion, being able to relate and being able to, to lean into someone else's experience with understanding and love. And then find, finally, mindfulness, that ability to be ourselves and to look at, our, and yet to be quiet and still enough to be able to, to um, sense our place in a process and to be able to level out our experience, our emotions, my emotions, and to be able to see and act more clearly. So mental equivalence is just another one of these tools and I think it's very elemental in the process of manifestation, and which is another way to say the process of achieving our New Year's resolutions. And this isn't to talk about New Year's resolutions. I actually can't think of one that I've ever completed. Um, but the truth is that mental equivalents, uh, as you will learn this morning, um, are, a, are a tool that we each possess that can bring us closer to our dreams. So based on my classwork over the last few weeks and based on the idea that this is the last week of the year, I decided to focus on spiritual equivalents today as the topic for this talk. To define mental equivalence, uh, taking it directly from the glossary of the science of mind, and for those of you who don't know, the science of mind is the name of the textbook that we study, um, written by our founder, Ernest Holmes. And this was written, well, nearly 100 years ago now. Mental equivalence, having a subjective idea of a desired experience. Now remember that the word subjective is defined as relating to the way a person experiences things in your own mind. All right, so subjective is very personal. It's emotional. It's that feeling center. So again, mental equivalents are having a subjective idea of the desired experience. As we bring ourselves to a greater vision than the range of our present concepts, we can then induce a greater concept and, there, and thereby manifest and demonstrate more in our experience. All right, does that make sense? As you know, science of mind is fairly cerebral and, we, and we, uh, we act from mind and from spirit. But the idea that we bring ourselves to a greater vision of what we want by focusing on it and by believing it, by imagining it more and more clearly what I'm about to read is from the text or from the uh, class book that we used in class. 
I really was going to try to paraphrase everything in my own words, but some things uh, have been prepared better than I can do that, so that's, gonna, that's the route I'm going to take today. The law of mental equivalence is like a magnet. A magnet that draws the exact same, the exact thing that you have deeply lodged in your subconscious mind to you. It never stops working. So the experience you're currently living is the equivalent of the mental picture of yourself at this moment deep in your own mind. You have to make sure that your dreams are directly equal to the picture you hold of yourself deep in your subconscious mind. Again, you have to be sure that your dreams are directly equal to the picture you hold of yourself deep in your mind. You have to be willing to do the work that's necessary to, uh, to uproot and remove any negative images of yourself and see yourself as being that which you desire to be right now. Once you become it in your mind and allow the thought and imagery of who you truly see yourself to be, allow it to ferment within your own subconscious mind, and you will begin to change the trajectory of your own experience and move in new directions and manifest that which you desire to experience. Understanding how to use mental equivalence clears negative obstructions out of the way and allows us to see more clearly our dreams. You see, we're surrounded by the mental equivalence of our thoughts every day. We can look around our lives and see that we have created our lives from certain mental equivalents already. But let's look a little broader. Not only are we the, the creations of our mental equivalents, so are our communities. So is the center. This center, the sum of the center and the mindset of the center is based on the mental equivalence of everyone here. The thoughts of our and the actions of our community are based on the mental equivalence of the people in it. Let's go broader. What about our country? Look at, Amer look at the USA compared to Canada. Neighbors, yet different in their own ways, and, many, and most of those ways, I think, can be easily traced back to the mental equivalence of their citizens and their leaders. Other ways we can look at it are the creative minds in history that, that, we, that we all know the names of and that we can relate to. Leonardo da Vinci. Here was a man before the internet, before computers, before CAD, you know, computer animated drafting. He sat down and he created the helicopter, the parachute, a tank, and many more. Thomas Edison, how many times did he attempt to establish and create electricity or to present electricity. He didn't create it, but to, uh, to create it in a form that we can use it. How many times did he do it wrong before he did it right? Well, every single one of those was the path of his mental equivalent to getting it right. A slow, steady spiral that continues to move upward and, and toward a goal. So it's important to remember that even though we, uh, will, we establish mental equivalence, they, they too can evolve, and they should evolve, into the greatest and most accurate portrayal and representation of what is in our minds. The Wright brothers. The Wright brothers created an airplane. And, and uh, well, da Vinci did, this, did the same thing with his helicopter, I suppose. But the Wright brothers are another example of many, uh, many steps that, that didn't create an airplane until it did. And every one of those steps is a mental equivalent. Mental equivalents are everywhere. These things you're sitting in, these things called chairs, a mental equivalent. The glasses that I'm using to read the, the paper written on by a pencil, mental equivalents. Everything around us is literally the mental equivalent of the person who created it. And when you think about that, that seems to, seems to me that that leans into greater power for each of us, for ourselves. Now I'd like to read to you some, some paragraphs from Ernest Holmes and the Science of Mind. Jesus said, 
As ye believe, it shall be done unto you. This teaching of Jesus suggests that we are all surrounded by an intelligent law, which does unto each of us as we believe. The law is infinite and perfect, but in order to make a demonstration, we must have a mental equivalent of the thing we desire. A demonstration is born out of a mental concept, having a strong picture or mental idea and holding to that equivalent regardless of circumstances and conditions, we must sooner or later manifest according to that idea or concept. You all understand what I'm saying. We all experience it in our lives at one time or another, sometimes more frequently than others, but everything in our worlds are the mental equivalent of what we think. As we bring ourselves to a greater vision, we induce a greater concept and thereby demonstrate more in our experience. In this way, there is a continuous growth and unfoldment taking place. We don't expect to give a treatment today for prosperity and have a million dollars tomorrow. But little by little, we can unfold our consciousness through the acquisition of greater and greater mental equivalence, until at last we shall be made free. So again, this is it's an idea that does not need to be immediately concrete. In fact, in a few minutes, you all, I'm going to help you all create a mental equivalent for something in your lives. But the, the, the important thing to remember, just like treatment, just like our process of prayer, is that it is a process. And that the mental equivalent I have today, I can call perfect, whole, and complete. And that same mental equivalent can evolve and tomorrow be something of an, an image of that same idea, but even greater. That is the power of our imaginations. So free yourself forever from the thought that God may be pleased from a life of sacrifice. That the world is any better because of your misery or that righteousness is more perfectly expressed through poverty than abundance. Know that the greater abundance that you are bringing out in your life, the more perfectly you are satisfying that divine urge within yourself. Anything you can dream of is not too great for you to undertake. If it hurts no man and brings happiness and good into your own life, Never let anything cause you to doubt your ability to demonstrate the truth. Never let anything cause you to doubt your ability to demonstrate the truth. Conceive of your world as being the thing. See the desire as an already accomplished fact. Rest in perfect confidence, peace, and certainty. Never look for the results. Never wonder, never become anxious, never feel hurried or worried, because there is, no limit, there is no limitation, and there is no poverty in thought, and there is no lack. So once you have your mental equivalent in your mind, it's easy to have for a moment, isn't it? But then when we leave here and I go home and my day starts to move on, and then my week and later, later, later. How do we keep it in our minds? Well, there is a great thinker whose name is Emmett, was Emmett Fox. And Emmett Fox was a divine science minister. And he was a personal friend of one of my, my new thought heroes, Thomas Troward. And he wrote the book, The Mental Equivalent, which is uh, what is now used. He wrote this in the 40s. And this, this short little 30 page book is what we used as our text in class. And Emmett Fox says, you build in the mental equivalent by thinking quietly, constantly, and persistently of the kind of thing you want. And by, th and by that thinking, there are two qualities, clarity and interest. You change your thoughts and keep it changed in the way to build a new mental equivalent. And that, my friends, is the secret of accomplishment. You already have a mental equivalent for everything that's in your life today. You must destroy the pattern for the thing you do not want 
and it will disappear. You must build a new pattern or mental equivalent for the things you want and they will come into your life. So we've spoken about clarity, being able to imagine something more and more clearly using the, the creative tools and the senses that we have. Even if it's in your mind, even if you are imagining an experience, you can expound on that experience in your mind and you can make it more and more clear using tools like, um, well, like smell. If, you are, if your imagination, in your imagination, the greatest thing you could be is someone popping popcorn at a movie theater, smell that popcorn. See the customers. Feel the space you're in. If you want to be somewhere that has, an amazing, that has amazing views around you, see those in your mind. Don't be afraid. Be brave. Go deeper into the, your imagination and, and see them. Research them. Sacred study. Research the things you want and be able to see them more and more clearly. Um, other tools we have are like um, um, dream maps or memory boards, right, where we can put images that are already established up for our use. Um, and for our creating more and greater mental equivalents. So we have our senses that we can imagine with, and, and these are uh, points of clarity. But interest being Emmett Fox's second point, interest is the tricky part in my mind because this is how I hang on tight, and this is how over time I continue to develop my mental equivalent. So we, again, we have spiritual tools. We have meditation. We have affirmative thought. And remember, every time I replace a negative thought, oh, I can't, oh, I can't, with an affirmative thought of yes, I can, and this is how, and this is, or this is what it looks like, and this is how it will feel, feel, these things resonate into spirit and law, and they will come forth as manifestation. So today, I am going to invite each of you to create a new mental equivalent for something of your own right now. You don't have to go through a five-week class, and you don't have to have a piece of paper or pencil. Because I can, I can guess and assume that right now in each of your minds, you can quickly come up with something, with a little bit of help, quickly come up with something that you want to work on, that you want to create, that you want to bring into greater a uh, greater physical being. So I'm going to list some ideas, and I want you to choose one or another, or maybe you already have your idea in your mind. Think about things like career. What is your career? Do you have a career? Do you want a career? What is that career? And then, Let's say, that's it, I want a career. Well, what do you want? What do you, well, you know what it is. Deep down inside, you know what it is. And if you're not sure, then this is gonna be the launching point to learn what that is. Health and wellness. Maybe you want better health. Maybe you want to start a new workout regime in this new year. Whatever that is, think about that for yourself. Family. This was my uh, in-class project. I feel, I feel honestly like my life is pretty blessed. I have so much of, and so much and so blessed with, with love and things around me. But I know that my relationship with my family can use a little work. So right now in my mind, what does that look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? Finances, the tried and true idea of prosperity and abundance. Well, today is a new start, so maybe finances is something you would like to emphasize, grow, or change. Your spirituality, the spirituality, the way you're growing in spirit, the way you're, you are evolving, maybe that's something you'd like to focus on this morning. Relationships, maybe you want a new one. Maybe you want out of the one you're in. Whatever that is, now is an opportunity to identify it 
and we're going to work on it quickly and, and uh, peacefully together. And then, of course, there, there's other. It might not be anything that I've mentioned yet, but something very special and very, very close to you, something that you want to create and grow. So I hope that this has given you all some ideas, something to work on in your own mind. Uh, because we're going to do a guided meditation that's going to help to, to raise your awareness of the mental equivalent of what you want. And for, this, for these few minutes, I want you in your mind to revel in the possibility and the greatness, unlimited greatness, anything we want, we can have with interest and clarity. I found this uh, guided meditation on the website, ilivethelifeyoulove.com. And I think this is going to be a great experience for all of us. All right, so sit comfortably in your seat. Sit up and place your feet flat on the floor. Rest your hands comfortably in your lap or at your sides. Hmm. Hmm. Gently close your eyes, part way or all the way. This is about you and your comfort. This isn't about the person next to you or me. This is about you and your dreams. Take a breath. Let your belly fill with air and gently release, letting it all out. Relax. Take another deep breath in, in, and hold and release, exhaling completely. Take another breath in and in and hold, but this time tense your body, tense every muscle in your body and hold it for five, four, three, two, one, and release and let it out. Oh, resume your breathing normally, deeply, evenly, sweetly. Hmm. Take a moment and sense your spiritual center, that warm, glowing ember of love and spirit and light that is you. Sense it. And sense it as the stillness within you. Now, as you sit, recall the vision of what it is you want. The, visit, the vision of your idea, your greater mental equivalent, and let it come into your mind. If you're not sure what it is, imagine pictures, something peaceful and beautiful to you. Flowers, a hillside, a cloudy sky, a mountain. But I want you to make it vivid. Grow it in your mind. Grow your, the thing you want in your life. Grow it in your mind. See it in all of its detail as best you can. Push the limits of your imagination. If you're not sure what that detail is, allow something to fall in. And knowing that after, after this morning, you can go back and revisit it and keep pushing that mental equivalent. See your mental equivalent in full color. See it in crystal clear imagery. This is your dream. 
for whatever it is. This is yours. Make it real. Feel it. Sense it. Smell it. Touch it. If your dream is in a place with people, hear them. Hear, this, hear the background chatter. If it's in a place where you're alone, creating, look down at your desk and see what it is you're creating. Imagine exactly what you want. In your mind, in your mind's eye, step into your body within the moving image you see. Take, a, take this time. Wrap the imaginary body of your mind around the real body of you and feel it, experience it. Try to stay fully present and act as if this is your current reality. See your goal. See your mental equivalent all around you, within you and see it as though it is already manifested in your life. If hesitation, if questions, if worry, if doubt come up, gently release them and just let them go, knowing that as you release the negativity, it is naturally replaced by something else. That thing, that mental equivalent, that you are creating. Now, in your mind, look around through your new eyes. Feel this new reality. Experience everything. Experience how your body feels. The emotions within your heart the changes in the physical world. This is your creativity, your imagination. Really feel how this new reality feels to you. What's happening? How are you feeling? How are you being? How are you thinking? How does your world look around you? Take this time now. Really live this goal of yours. Feel the joy that it brings you. Allow these good feelings to ripple through your body, permeate you with a positive glowing sensation. And know that with each wave of these joyful feelings, you're sealing your contract with the universe, that this feeling will be manifested in your experience. Experience the calm realization that your new reality is now in process and coming to you in divine right time and divine right order. Hmm. And it is done. You can now let go and trust 
knowing that you are abundant and you are powerful. You are marvelous. Take a moment and use gratitude as the tool and acknowledging that this new goal is already being realized in your life. Hmm. And when you're ready, begin to come back into this space. Sense the chair and the floor beneath your feet. Sense the space around you and the space that you're in here in the sanctuary at home via our love stream. Hmm. And as you're coming back to us, I'm going to share what Ernest Holmes says about the power of intention. The way to proceed is to begin where we are right now. It's not scientific to attempt to begin anywhere else. One who understands the systematic use of the law will understand that they are where they are because of what they are. They will not say, I must remain where I am because of what I am, but instead begin to disclaim what, the, what they appear to be. And as their statements release wrong subjective tendencies, providing in their place a correct concept of li life and reality, they will automatically be lifted out of their condition. Impelling forces sweeping everything before them will set them free if they trust in spirit and the working of universal law. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's our tradition that uh, we pray together, so please join me in, in prayer. In this time and in this place, we know there is only one. By any name, any name, spirit, universal law, God, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, in any place, whether it be a mosque, ashram, synagogue, or sanctuary, there is only one great spirit that flows through and of all of all, seen and unseen, everywhere, now. perfect, whole, and complete. And because there is only one, and there is no duality, there is only one, and that means that I am part of that one, that we are part of that one, that everything we experience, everything we, every condition, every thing that we experience in our lives is of God. It can be no other way. And because what we experience is God, we acknowledge our divine birthright. As humans in spiritual form, knowing that everything we desire, those things in life that we desire, we can create mental equivalents of them and we can bring them into our lives by the power of our thinking. For as we say, Change your thinking, change your life. Unlimited, unlimited potential and possibility is before us and we embrace it, we accept it, we are grateful for it. We are so grateful for the opportunity to share and to learn from the, the philosophy of science of mind but again, acknowledging that regardless of what path any, anyone is on, that a spiritual path is growth. And we acknowledge it, and we are grateful for that. Life is good, and we are so grateful. As we release these images and these words into universal law, we know that as we speak them, they become so as we are working within the laws of the universe of spirit. 
and growth. So there's nothing else to say, there's nothing else to be, but to acknowledge this truth as together we say, and so it is. so blessed. We are blessed with this beautiful building. We're blessed with the talents of our musical team, and the people that provide us with this opportunity to gather every Sunday. And this part of our service is dedicated toward our blessings. And we know that as we give, so, that, so shall we receive. Whether you give, and we believe that it's important to give to your spiritual center. So whatever that is, we hope that you do practice that actively and with intention. But here at the Center for Spiritual Living, we rely on your gifts to keep us open, to keep us going. And so this is that time of our service that we celebrate that. And we invite you to bring into your hand or your heart your offering to the center or to wherever you get your spiritual fulfillment. And together we will say our, our giving statement, and our giving affirmation. So please join me in saying this together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Filled with gratitude, I let this be, and so it is. invite my daughter Amanda back up to the stage and we'll share another song with you. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is a song um, that was inspired um, by somebody in our community, uh, a couple actually, Carol, Carolyn and Bob Bergner. Um, some of you may remember them. Uh, Carolyn had this bright idea to have a competition of sorts and share it with the community. It was, um, she invited folks in the, in the community and the education um, areas of, of both the Salt Lake and Utah Valleys to um, create gingerbread houses and put them on display and auction, auction them off as a fundraiser for the poor. Um, she called it Gingerbread Jubilee. And I attended this, this wonderful event and was truly inspired by all the color and the smell of ginger and that spice bread and um, children everywhere, candy everywhere. Um, it was just a delightful sight. And it inspired uh, the song. This is called Gingerbread Jubilee. It's about a, a gingerbread family that gets created. A gingerbread man from a gingerbread land met a gingerbread lady fair. He knew from the start in his gingerbread heart they would share in love. So rare The gingerbread lady Would giggle and smile With a gingerbread man By her side Weave her a story She'd lilt him a song In a gingerbread sleigh They would ride To the gingerbread jubilee You can float Frost a chocolate mountain cake, even take a bite. Hear the children laugh in the spicy sweet air. What a marvelous gingerbread fair! The gingerbread man and his lady. Together, sweet dreams to unfold. On one autumn day, in their gingerbread way, they joined hearts as the ginger bells told. If you happen to roam by a gingerbread home where the gingerbread family abides, a gingerbread boy or a gingerbread girl. You to go for a ride to the gingerbread jubilee. You can fly like a honey stick bee through a soft taffy grove to a caramel bath. You can roll a lemon popcorn ball down a sugar path. Hear the children laugh in the spicy sweet air. What a marvelous gingerbread fair If the children laugh so merrily At the gingerbread jubilee Thank you. If only that were true. <laughs> uh, oh, what, a, what a marvelous day. Thank you for a beautiful service. Thank you for being here with us. 
Thank you for tuning in on our live stream today. Thank you, Rob Ekman, for a beautiful message. Uh, we'll require this guy right here to do some work. So um, I'm inspired. My New Year's resolutions will maybe be a little bit tougher than I had thought. Um, but it's always good work, isn't it? So don't forget what's coming up this week. World Peace Meditation at 5 a.m. wherever you are. Tune into that on New Year's Eve day. And that evening, join us right here for our burning bowl ceremony. It's probably one of the most popular things here at the Center for Spiritual Living where we gather together and have this wonderful ritual. We write down the things that we want to release, things that don't serve us anymore. And we also write down the things that we wish, the things that we want to manifest for the coming year. We write them down on flash paper and then drop them into a bowl. And at the end of the ceremony, and it's, it's a magnificent spectacle. I hope you can come to that. That's New Year's Eve day. Plenty of time for you to go out and party afterwards. Um, please join us here. And on behalf of the Center for Spiritual Living here in Salt Lake, happy, happy New Year. Let's sing together our closing song. I release and I, re I let go.
God.